Hello there, it's Rachel. Uh, welcome back to the allotment. We're currently overlooking the very dried out pond at the back of plot 10 uh, because another month is over. So it's time for a little nosy down at the allotment to see what I've been up to, which mm, not a lot really, but we've, we've done a few bits. Um, so as you can see, the pond's really dried out. I'm hoping it's gonna dry out a bit more so that we can clear it and have a good look and see what's going on down there. Uh, this is a hydrangea, I think. I'm hoping that's gonna grow this year. It doesn't want to grow, but we've had the big cut. We've cut the grass. Uh, we left it till uh, right the end of May and we only did it yesterday. Um, so, Everything that was hibernating should be awake and we won't be disturbing anything. Uh, compost heap is still the same. This is doing really well actually. We uncovered it the other day to add in the grass clippings and some compost maker and it's breaking down very, very quickly. Um, so hopefully that will be some good soil. And we've done, uh, we've cut all along here. Rob came with the, the big strimmer and the lawnmower and he did all of this for me. Um, so hopefully, we'll be able to get that dug over soon and then I will decide whether I want to put anything in or whether I just want to put uh, something like field beans or, or something like that just to maintain the soil until next year. But that's a decision for another day. So the currants are absolutely thriving. Got loads on here. I'm going to give you a little nosy in a minute into next door's plot as well because uh, over the bank holiday weekends we had some trespassers who unfortunately uh, lit, set a little fire in the polytunnel but thankfully it only took out the polytunnel and didn't take out anything else really but we've got a nice sturdy new fence so hopefully we shouldn't get any more trespassers which will be nice but yeah be careful with fire around your polytunnels kids because that's what could happen um, I have been a bad gardener and not looked into what this bush actually is and I feel bad now because it's flowering so I'm like oh I should check if there's anything I should be doing to, to help that out but here is the crops that I have got in uh, polytunnel is still the same not really doing much with that uh, I might talk about it in a, a little bit but we're going to show you so Here's my potatoes and my onions, my little experiments that I've got going. Uh, they seem to be doing really well. We uncovered them the other day and mounted them up and they seem to be thriving. These are my onion experiments. So I planted this row on the right with uh, wildflowers, cornflowers, some other things. Because it is a lot going to be a lot hotter here, I was hoping that if I interplant the onions with flowers, that might help them survive the extreme heat. Retain and um, also the cornflowers are beautiful. And then this other one here on the left, I've just put them in the earth with nothing. I do need to weed that soon. And then we've got these little guys with their new wigwam. Uh, I cut out me turning on the hose for the other plant. So here I have moved a few things around. Uh, the soft fruit's still there, it's growing. You can see just in the corner that I have changed the plant. So this is now no longer the kiwi plant. I put in a grape because uh, the kiwi was dying. And I couldn't really work out why, but then I checked the soil and it seems like this area retains a lot of moisture. I've no idea why. So I've put a grape in there instead. So the polytunnel is a mess. Uh, I've decided to stop worrying about it. Some strawberries there. I am going to build some raised beds in there, I think. Um, I've got a polytunnel book. I'm reading it at the moment. I'm trying not to worry too much about it. Some things have changed, so I'm having to change my plans at the allotment. The I've cut the grass here. I used to cut all the way up and maintain the path um, but some plot holders got a bit funny about it so I just do the bit in front of my plots now and that was me tripping. You can see this guy's growing. I think there's some bees up there. I 
think I can focus on the bees. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, there's a couple of people on the site who are quite grumpy and they get mad even if you're doing stuff for the benefit of everyone. So it's better to just do the bit that I'm responsible for and let them just deal with other things. Got myself a new sign while I was away. Seemed appropriate to add to my little collection that I've got on my shed. I always keep my eye out for, for nice stuff that I can put on my shed. Yeah. This area is kind of the same. I've been feeding the birds regularly, so we get birds. I need to do some weeding here. This is a job that I'm going to have to do by hand. Uh, I don't mind. I w this time of year, generally what I do is I, I come early in the morning and we'll do like half an hour. And that's the kind of thing I do. Cherries are growing. There's loads of cherries on this tree. I'm hoping that the birds are going to allow me to have some and not just nick them all but we shall see uh, a lot of people net their cherries i i like birds i don't really want to so i have to be quick and <laughs> try and get them before i do uh, the nature area is not really done much here the iris is growing this rose is one of those cheap pound roses that you get i can't remember whether i got it from home and bargain or whether i got it for poundland um, but it's thriving. Yeah, I got it a few years ago as a tribute to some of the pets that passed away and it's, it's doing great. Along here you can see the pear. Uh, I think there's some little pears. This is me searching for the pears. I, could, I couldn't find them. I walked through yesterday and was like, oh my goodness, there's pears. I need to put them on the, the video and then when I came back I couldn't see them. I think I'm going to find them in a minute. Um, but yeah, so because I've I've cut, there we go. It's a little pear growing along there. So hopefully I'll have some pears as well. Um, yeah, we've I cut back the other tree, so there's a little bit more light growing to that. As you can see, the chili and rhubarb on this side, and the bamboo are thriving. Oh my goodness, more pears. That's the one that I was looking for, and I couldn't find. So this chili and rhubarb, because behind there is a terrapin pond on the neighbour's plot, this side tends to be a lot wetter. Um, so the bamboo and the chili and rhubarb do really well. Uh, here we have the love flies bleeding. Still haven't done anything with that. I think I've decided that I'm going to shape it, um, but we shall see. We've got some alpine strawberries. I've already had a few strawberries off there. So cute and small, but they're delicious. I want to get some more of those to put them somewhere as well. Everything is flowering over here. The bees are having an absolute blast uh, with all the flowers that are in. And I thought that this had died. And then I came back. Uh, this is me looking for bees. There we go. Some bees. Uh, I thought this had died. And then I came back and it had all of these long growths. I was like, oh my God, what's going on with my grass? I'm assuming that's how it grows, which is pretty cool. We've got some more flowers along here, some strawberries. This is growing back as well. I have cut that down and it's growing back. So I'm really pleased about that. I thought that was another one that I thought had died. I've managed to resuscitate. Uh, as you can see, the chilling rhubarb on this side is a lot smaller because it's a lot drier. Uh, I have been periodically dumping big bu buckets of water there to bring it back up. I uh, managed to bring the level of the pond up as well. Pampas grass. And now we're going on to, oh, my little flowers. I always forget about these and then every year they grow and I'm like, oh my goodness, a little splash of pink. So this area, uh, we've done the first cut. So I used the small strimmer and then Rob came with the larger one and we've just cut the main pathways and the things that needed we could safely cut and then everything that needs to be done by hand has been left. So here there's a load of soft fruit growing in there so I need to come in and I need to cut all of those back and this is my plum tree I think it is. I think it's a plum. Uh, it was a gift. So we created little islands and so like this one underneath here there's strawberries growing so you can't strim right up to the tree because you just strim all of the strawberries so uh, we did as close as possible and then this is another spot 
that I need to weed by hand. Again with the lavender, I've cut as much as I can. I've got to come back and I need to do it by hand. All the gooseberries and stuff are growing. So there is going to be crops here on the site, even if I don't put anything in, which is lovely. So next on to the back of the plot. And my shirt. Look at it. Isn't it fab? I still have some bits I need to paint. So we made a trellis out of things that we had left over from when we demolished the chicken shed. That's a new deck that's made out of pallets and old decking board from the house. Uh, along here on the trellis is the goji berry, the grape, um, which is growing really nicely. And I've moved the kiwi over here because it is a bit dry and it's a little bit more acidic. So I'm hoping that it's going to prefer that. That's a little covered area that's going to become a potting area. And this is my deck. This is where I've been sitting off. This is my roof birds like to go on there that is from the shed that we demolished uh, I did have a bigger piece but somebody wandered off with it but it's fine because this one worked out absolutely perfectly so this is a nice place to sit have a cup of tea get out of the sun put your feet up uh, it's still not 100% done there's more fencing that needs to go in uh, I need to paint some areas it looks nice uh, this area I need to fence off this all needs sorting um, so that bed frame is going to be recycled uh, to go over the front of this deck in here just as a decorative thing and then I'm gonna have a fence and it's my path and I think that's it really um, we are still working on things as always uh, when you're disabled plans change so we're having to rethink a few stuff but uh, we're getting there we're getting there so thank you very much for joining me uh, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your month uh, and you grow some good things and you make some good choices and I shall see you soon bye bye